Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to start a three-part series on treatments for obesity. The first part is going to discuss diets and behaviors that are proven to be the most effective for weight loss. The second part is going to discuss prescription medications that are available to help with weight loss. And the third part is going to be surgical treatments to help with weight loss. As a primary care physician, I see the devastating effects of obesity on my patients. High blood pressure, heart attacks, stroke, and diabetes, just to name a few. Obesity has surpassed smoking as the number one cause of preventable disease and disability. I'm often asked by my patients, what's the best way to lose weight? I wanted to look at the latest data to see what it shows and pass that along to you. I want to encourage each of you that even a loss of 5% of your body weight has proven health benefits. So if you're 250 pounds, losing 12 and a half pounds can make a difference. Did you know that if you have type 2 diabetes and you lose weight, you can cure that condition? And if you have pre-diabetes, you can prevent the progression to diabetes with weight loss. But realistic weight goals are necessary. With lifestyle measures alone, a weight loss of about 5 to 7% of your body weight is typical. And I think a 5% reduction in your body weight is a great goal to start with. Adding medication can increase the odds of more weight loss, but typically large amounts of weight loss is really difficult to do without surgical intervention like bariatric surgery. I don't say this to discourage anyone, but simply to give yourself some grace and help you to set realistic goals. No matter what diet you decide to use, you need to get into the habit of writing down what you're putting in your mouth. By simply becoming more aware of what you're eating, you will change some bad habits. A study in 2011 reviewed 22 studies and found a consistent relationship between self-monitoring and successful weight loss. Second, eliminate easy sources of excess calories like sugared beverages. Switch to simply drinking water. A beer has about 150 calories. So if you're drinking three beers a night, you're consuming 450 extra and unnecessary calories a day. And if you keep this up every day, you'll gain about a pound a week or four pounds a month or 50 pounds in a year. Next, you need to get comfortable with understanding calories and how many calories you need every day. Weight loss comes down to calories in versus calories used. And a good place to start is using an energy expenditure guide to estimate how many calories you're using every day to simply maintain the weight you're at. Let's look at it together. You need to find the category that you fit into. I'm a female and I'm 49 years old, so I would be in this category. I need to know my actual weight in kilograms, so weigh yourself in pounds and then divide that number by 2.2, and that's your weight in kilograms. Multiply that number by 0 0.0621 and then add 2.0357. Then I take that entire number and multiply it by 240. But we aren't done yet because there's an activity factor that allows you to take into consideration how sedentary you are every day. A construction worker is going to expend a lot more calories every day than someone that works at a desk job. So take the number you got in step one and multiply it by the activity factor. This number is the number of calories you expend every day if you wanted to stay at your same weight. Now armed with that information, you should start calculating how many calories you're eating every day. A good way to do this is through an app on your phone. I've known people that have had success with the app called MyFitnessPal. This app does not provide any support, it's simply an easy way to track calories and it's free. An average deficit of 500 calories a day will result in an initial weight loss of about one pound a week. But after three to six months of this, you will find your weight loss will slow because as your weight decreases, your calories need decrease. And at that time, you'll either need to reduce calories even more or increase your activity level. Don't get discouraged. Okay, now let's move on to specific diets. There are so many out there. Is there one that's been shown to be better than another? Well, yes and no. I'm sure that it's no surprise that the greatest predictor of weight loss success is the amount of adherence to the diet you chose. 
meaning that if you stick to a diet, you will lose more weight than if you don't do it as long. A few studies have shown that if you want to simply jumpstart your weight loss in the short term, a high protein, low carbohydrate diet or intermittent fasting seem to be the most effective. But it's important to stress that when you choose these diets, when you do eat, the foods you're eating are whole natural foods, meaning not processed and they're high in fiber, low in sugar and processing. For example, if you decide to try intermittent fasting, but when you do eat, you grab a hamburger and a milkshake, that's not gonna get you anywhere. And there are better health benefits if the protein source is from plants than when it's from animals. Diets like Atkins, Ketogenic, Zone, and Paleo all have different areas that are restricted, as you can see in this easy to understand chart that I really liked. Many of these diets that I mentioned have different combinations of protein levels, but they're all considered low carb. What's interesting about them is the fat content. The ketogenic diet tends to have a very high fat content, followed by Atkins, Zone, and Paleo. The Ornish diet is considered a very low fat diet, but as you can see, it has a lot of restrictions associated with it and isn't necessarily focused on protein or carbs. Their main structure is around fat content. But at the end of the day, there simply isn't one diet that stands out as truly being better than another. Choose the diet plan that you think you will like the best and stick with the longest. I liked how the journal Nutrition summarized their findings in an excellent article written in 2020. They wrote, quote, there's no optimally effective diet for all individuals to lose weight. The fundamental point is to adopt a diet that creates a negative energy balance on adequate food quality to promote health. Adherence will predict long-term success, end quote. But as a physician, the one plan I would recommend for anyone, whether they're trying to lose weight or not, is the Mediterranean diet. This diet is high in fruits, veggies, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, and olive oil. It allows moderate amounts of fish, poultry, and dairy, but has little red meat. As you can see from this chart, there are very few limitations. This plan is one of the few associated with multiple tremendous health benefits, like a reduced risk of stroke, lower overall mortality, and cardiovascular mortality. In observational studies, the Mediterranean diet was associated with a decreased incidence of Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and multiple cancers. I thought this was a great chart to also realize the benefits of the Mediterranean diet compared to other diets. The more green dots, the better. And the larger the green dot means there are more studies showing this benefit. A gray dot means no effect was seen, and a red dot means there was a negative effect. As you can see, the Mediterranean diet was the only diet that showed a benefit in every category. The low carb diet also had impressive benefits, but unfortunately caused an increase in total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, which isn't a good side effect. There are lots of recipes online that follow the Mediterranean diet and any dietitian would be able to guide you as well. But if you're simply overwhelmed with the aspect of trying to count calories and figure out the food that you will eat, maybe a commercial weight loss program is a good fit for you. I like these programs because they're convenient, provide the food, and provide a lot of support with them. The con is the price. But there was a good study in a reputable journal called the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2015 that compared many commercial weight loss programs. At 12 months, the two commercial programs that had the most weight loss were Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig. I would caution people against using programs with very low calorie diets or those that use shakes or liquids for multiple meals a day. There will definitely be a rapid weight loss associated with these diets, but people will have a lot of trouble keeping the weight off for any length of time after this diet is stopped. And another way to approach weight loss is by using an app on your phone. Do they work? Well, one meta-analysis of 41 studies with over 6,000 participants showed that the use of mobile apps did help to reduce caloric intake, increase fruit and veggie consumption, and helped people to lose about five pounds. But apps vary widely. One app that I would feel comfortable recommending to people is the Noom app. But choose any app that has interactive features with personalized messages and goal setting. 
The more specific and tailored it is to you, the better it will be. Well, and what else has been shown to make weight loss more successful? I alluded to some of them previously, but weight loss is more successful when there are behavioral interventions as well as reducing the calories you're consuming. These things include key items like setting a specific goal, keeping a food diary, meal planning, exploring your relationship with food and what your triggers might be, and having the ability to problem solve when you get frustrated or have a bad day or week. I want to encourage everyone to make eating an activity that connects you with other people. Turn off the TV, gather around a table, eat with someone else, carve time out in your day and make it an intentional activity. These things may need to be explored with a registered dietitian or a weight loss group or community. And I know many of us are focused on exercise as a way to lose weight, but I would ask you to shift your focus to your diet. When weight loss is the desired goal, you need to lower your calories. You can gradually increase your physical activity over time in order to maintain your weight loss. But realize the main contributor to weight loss really is reducing the number of calories you consume. But when you have gotten to your goal weight, what's the biggest predictor of keeping the weight off? Well, exercise. Ideally, the physical activity should be done five to seven days a week for approximately 30 minutes or more, but these minutes can be spread throughout the day. And there are other things too that have been linked to keeping the weight off, and these include weighing yourself daily. If you know early that you're gaining weight, you can make small adjustments. I've always had concerns that recommending patients weigh themselves regularly, either daily or weekly, may increase their depression or anxiety, but this was not observed in a systematic review of 17 studies. And lastly, people have more success with weight loss when they regularly attend a weight loss program or accountability group to, to keep them accountable and to discuss struggles with other people. At the end of the day, here are my takeaways. Number one, you don't need to lose that much weight to have a tremendous health benefit. Number two, learn how many calories you need in a day to maintain your weight and start by reducing your calories by 500 a day. Number three, choose a diet that you're excited about. I really like the Mediterranean diet. Number four, remember that behavioral changes are important. Things like accountability, weighing yourself regularly, and keeping a daily dietary log. And lastly, number five, start to increase your activity, knowing that you will need to keep this up to keep the weight off. Thanks for joining me.